going to be sticking together to make that stick. How does they get that? They are sticking together because in between these particles there is a force of attraction which we call as intermolecular force. So ideally the molecules make up all the matter around us made solid, made liquid, made big gas. The molecules are not different. What is different? How they are structured in matter. And when we are talking about how they are structured in matter, two important terms come into our place, which is intermolecular space, that is the space between two molecules, and the intermolecular force, which is responsible for keeping these molecules together. Now, there is one very interesting thing out there. What is this interesting thing? The force wants to keep the particles together. Now, if the force increases, the particles will come closer to each other, making what? The intermolecular force. Be lesser. Hence, the intermolecular force and the intermolecular space are going to be inversely related. What does that mean? It means if the force increases, the intermolecular space will be decreased. And on the other hand, if the force decreases, the intermolecular force will be what? If the forces are decreasing, the intermolecular spaces will be increased. Right, students? Let's go forward and let's understand this. You know that there is one thing we know which can stay in all the three states of matter. What is this? Let's talk about it. Let's say water. We know water as its solid form, ice. We know water as its liquid form, water itself. And we know that water can also become gas which we call as water. Vapor or steam. Right? So, ideally, my solid, liquid, and gas, it exists in all the three states. Right? So, when we heat ice, what do we get? We see that when we heat ice, the ice melts and it becomes water. That is, solid gets converted into liquid. Why? Because the process of melting. That means I can convert a solid into liquid and in both the cases it has the same molecules. Furthermore, if I continue the heating, what will I see? I will see that the liquid, that is the water will convert into steam, that is water vapor on boiling. That means even liquid can then get converted into gases. And here, if you are talking about water, the molecules of water did not change from ice to liquid to gas. Then what did it change? What made these three different states look or feel very different? Why do we see this? The answer to this comes from the intermolecular spaces and the intermolecular forces. In solids, the particles were very close. The force is very strong. Right? Spaces is very less. The particles were not very free to move. But as we gave them heat, they gained energy. The particles start moving faster and farther apart. Hence, from solid it turned to be or converted to be liquid. Why? Because in liquid, the space is moderate and so are the forces. But if we keep on heating it, the particles will gain energy and it will start moving more and more. Making what? Making the force very less but the spaces very great. That's what constitutes for the gaseous phase of water. So what did we understand here? What are solids made up of? In case of solids, the intermolecular force is very strong, right? So if I talk about solids, Intermolecular force is very strong, right? But what about the intermolecular spaces? The spaces between the molecules is very less or very small. So, intermolecular force is strong, intermolecular spaces are weak, it's very small. So, the molecules are not very free to move here and there. Hence, they are tightly packed. What we say for molecules of the 
solid the molecules are tightly packed they are not very free to move now when they are very tightly packed we obviously link a property with solids what is that they have definite shape they are rigid right true and moreover they also get a definite volume because of this so we understood that because of how the molecules are structured in solid the solid gets its property of having a definite shape and a volume it is rigid in changing its shape moreover it cannot be compressed due to its very strong intermolecular force and very small intermolecular shape compress means changing the shape on pressing or applying pressure now if i apply pressure on the table the table does not change its shape why is it so because there are no space where the molecules can shift here and they are changing the shape it keeps its shape rigid that is how we get solid when we talk about liquids in liquid students the intermolecular force is moderate it's not very high it is moderate less than the solid so it is moderate and so is the intermolecular space is the intermolecular spaces are the spaces between the molecules now if the force is not very great the, the molecules will not be very tightly packed so what do we see in case of liquid intermolecular force is weak and the intermolecular space more as compared to the solid so the molecules are free to change their position within the liquid you must have seen the liquids are free to flow it changes its shape how if i put some liquid in a bottle it will take up the shape of the bottle if i put the same liquid in a mug it will take the shape of the mug so the liquid because its molecules are free to move they can move within the liquid that doesn't mean that the molecules can leave the liquid. Hence, the liquid have no definite shape. But what about the volume? Now, if I take ten ml or let's say hundred ml of water in a glass, and I put that hundred ml in a bottle, that hundred ml is not going to change by changing the vessel, though the shape does. Hence, for liquid, what we can see, we can see they do not have a definite shape, but they definitely have a definite volume. it can flow and it requires something to hold it such as a container so hence we again see it is all about the structuring of the molecules depending on their intermolecular force and intermolecular spaces how the state will be for matter talking about the same we get to the last one which is gases in which the intermolecular space is what it's very 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 large it is very very large but the intermolecular force at the same time is going to be very very weak the particles are very easily go here and there they are free to right so in case of a gas the intermolecular force is very small and the intermolecular space is far more as compared to the liquid so what do we see we see that the molecules of gas are free to move in all the direction and they can fill up the entire space available to them they can go here and there very easily so they need a container to hold them like liquids but they are even free to move out of the container if we do not put a lid over it right thus gas has what gas has neither a definite shape nor a definite volume it can take up the whole volume whatever is provided so right now if i put some perfume right here it will spread in the whole room why because the gas will not be stagnant by the container if i open the door it will even go far outside so it doesn't have a definite shape nor a definite it is easily compressed due to maximum intermolecular spaces Because it has so much spaces in between, I can compress a gas. For example, if I take a balloon, I blow some air in it. I can put the my hands and I can put the force and press it. The balloon will take the shape of or it will change the shape. Why? Because the gas can be compressed. Hence, we figured out why these three different states exist because they have different structuring for their molecules. and when i talk about the three different states of matter that is solid liquid and gas we can distinguish between them by their
property. So let us read this out. For solid, we see that it has a definite shape and a definite volume. Right? The particles have no intermolecular spaces or very less intermolecular spaces. Hence, it takes the shape and keeps it and so does the volume. On the other hand, the liquid has no definite shape. It takes up the shape of the container. But it does not leave the fact that it has a fixed volume or definite volume. The last one which is the gas is neither has a definite shape nor has a definite volume. The next point is position of the molecules in solid is fixed. They are not to move. But position of molecules of liquid is not fixed. They can move in the liquid around. Right? So the molecules can change their position within it. On the other hand, gases, the position of the molecules of the gas is not fixed at all. The molecules are free to move in all the directions. Right? Then we come about the third point. Third point says, it cannot flow. Have you ever seen the table being flowing or the chair being flowing or us being solid flow? No. So, something which is solid, it cannot flow but we can still put a heap. So, when we talk about soil or sand, you know, we can make heaps of it though it is solid. So, we can put it one over the other. On the other hand, liquids are free to flow. They even flow from a higher level to a lower level. Right? You might have seen uh, the... Waterfall, it goes, the uh, water flows from a high level to a low. The gases can flow in all directions. They do not go from higher to lower level. They go in all the directions here, there, everywhere. Okay? When we talk about the solid, it has very strong intermolecular force. The intermolecular force for the liquid is less as compared to that of solid. But when we talk about gases, it has negligible intermolecular Force. Then it has very small intermolecular space, which the solids have very small intermolecular space. The liquid have small intermolecular spaces, but more than the solids, and the gases have very large intermolecular space. Let's come to the sixth point. It cannot be compressed. Can we compress the solid? No. Even a prime very great load, it may break, but it cannot be compressed. The same happens with liquid, but it is still slightly compressible because of the intermolecular spaces that happen. Talking about gas, it is very easily compressible. Repellent gas in a very small space because it, it has a very large intermolecular space. When we come to the seventh point, it does not need a vessel to contain. We do not need a vessel to contain the chair or the table or a. But for the liquid, we require a vessel to contain. Right? Talking about the last one, it needs a vessel to contain them. That is what the gases also require a vessel to be contained. Then we come to the very last point. It can have any number of free surfaces. What do you mean by that? If I talk about the solid, let's say I talk about the cube or dice. We know it has six faces. If I talk about any other, uh, any other object, it can have any surfaces which are free, but for liquid, there is only one free surface. Why is it so? Because when I spill a liquid in a glass, it is bounded by the three area, but the only top area is free surface. Talking about gas, it has no free surface. All it is being bound by all the boundaries. Right, students?